Good afternoon and welcome back to the Perkins Garages YouTube channel for a Ford Cougar PHEV Black Pack Edition walk-around video. But before we get stuck in with the walk-around, if you're enjoying our content and would like to see some more in the future, and I don't blame you, please click on that subscribe button and that way you'll be in tune with all of our latest content. This here is an Agart Black Ford Cougar ST Line X Black Pack Edition PHEV. So the PHEV bit is a plug-in hybrid electrical vehicle. So the back of this vehicle, there is a 14.4 kilowatt battery that delivers up to 35 miles of fully electric driving. So the chances are your daily commute can be done on full electric with some incredibly low running costs. If you did have to go over 35 miles, don't panic. We have a 2.5 litre Duratec engine producing 225 PS of power. That power is then transferred through the front wheels through an automatic CVT gearbox. The Cougar is registered on a 2023 registration, meaning we have forward warranty until March 2026. The Cougar itself is on just over 10,000 miles, but like always, I'll get the exact number once we're on the dash in a moment. So let's go position ourselves on the near side front bumper where I present to you the beautiful remote central locking key in all of its beauty. Simply clicking the unlock button is going to wake up the daytime running lamps. Uh, daytime running lamps give you the, or give other road users, the ultimate visibility so you're always going to be seen. And no, that's not because they're strobe lights, that is because they're a solid LED pattern and yeah, yeah, they're going to be perfectly visible. They're flashing simply because the frequency in which my camera records at. So don't panic there, people. This Cougar has fitted the technology pack, which includes these quad prism LED adaptive headlamps. So some of the best headlamps on the Ford market. Going south, we have LED front fog lights and we have front parking sensors, which trail all the way around that front lip of the bumper. That is because this vehicle has fitted the Ford Self Park Assist. So it'll quite literally park itself for you. There's a lot going on at the front here, so let me just try and break it down a bit more. Below the Ford badge is a camera. This is a front facing camera that can be viewed in a panoramic wide spectrum. Just below the number plate there is that little dully black bit, which is a front facing radar responsible for some of the driver assistance pack, such as pre-collision assist. Starting to move ourselves around the front bumper, we get to these gorgeous 20 inch gloss black alloy wheels. These are performance wheels. And as you can see, we have the red painted brake calipers also. Look at them. I'm just going to take a moment. Look at them. Fitted with the Continental Premium Contact 6 tyres as standard. And again, are you doing 10,000 miles of work? Very good condition. Let's give you a little sample of that. Drawing your attention to the windscreen quickly to discuss some sensors. We have a light sensor there, so as the sun goes down and the moon comes up, your lights will come on automatically. Further north at the top of the windscreen there, that longish one is a traffic speed sign camera. This can be used in a coordination with the intelligent speed limiter. And to the right hand side is a rain sensor for the rain sensing wipers. Part of the technology pack also is a head up display HUD. So that little bit, you'll have a little perspex screen when the ignition is on. And I'll show you that inside the vehicle. It looks amazing. Further north up here is a panoramic glass opening roof let an abundance of light and fresh air into the cabin during these warmer months and look how low that sits at the body as well it really is wonderful so panoramic roof is all there as well this can be operated on the global open and global lock function also coming down to the body of the vehicle it's going to lock the vehicle put the key back in my pocket somewhere and take you to half zoom door handle we have these five lines for keyless entry so simply tapping behind the door handle and locks the vehicle and tapping again on those five lines locks the vehicle please note we have power folding and heated door mirrors and at the end there is that little icon which is a blind spot assist monitor this will illuminate in orange if someone's in your blind spot either on the near side or the off side of the vehicle so it's a very handy safety feature there so we're going to continue around the body of the vehicle so black wheels a black body and black rear privacy glass looks amazing black on black on black lovely colorway so this stage of the video i take a step back on the offside rear and get it nice and tight to the body i just gently rock the camera side to side down the offside so hopefully that gives you a good idea wherever you might be watching this video from of how wonderful the condition of this vehicle is 
and we'll give you a good look at the offside rear also again front and rear red brake calipers they look amazing I love these wheels so again the parking sensors start nice and early around the rear this is because of the forward park assist once again now the rear of the Cougar just take a nice zoom out shot there look you can see just how low the panoramic glass roof sits so the rear park sensors are complemented with a wide spectrum reversing camera so that's a front and a rear camera we're just going to give the near side the exact same treatment so again get a camera nice and high up we're just going to gently work the camera side to side like so so the vehicle engine is filled from the near side rear underneath that little flap there I'm just going to give you a nice look at the near side rear wheel and we can follow that all the way to the near side front give you a good look at that so again the vehicle is fueled from the rear but charged from the front so if this is your first experience with an electric vehicle or a plug-in hybrid vehicle, this little socket here is called a Type 2 connector. This is where your charging gun will be plugged into. Down there we have a button for the scheduled charging and also one there to unlock the charger itself. I'll come back to charging in just a second, hopefully giving you a bit of an explanation about how that all works. So that is the exterior taken care of. Let's progress and have a look inside. So we have a double unlock function for the power tower gate. So click that twice, then that rises up. To shut it once more, the button is on the right hand side of the boot seal. Going from top to bottom, the tourneau cover is built into the rear window. So as you open and close the boot, it will open and shut itself. So, a lot to discuss. First off, this is the charging cable supplied with the vehicle. This will go into any domestic UK plug socket. This will go into the front of the vehicle. Together, this will fully charge the vehicle in six hours. So again, back to the explanation about your daily commute. If you could charge this overnight, not a problem. Every day, run it on full electricity, everybody's a winner. Nice cheap running costs. So that will do in about six hours. If you then went on to get the pod installed at your property, which will have this connector and something similar to the other end, but slightly smaller, that's called a type two to type two, and that will then deliver you seven kilowatts an hour. And that'll be roughly about three hours of charging. So depends on how quickly you need to charge the battery, depends on what charge you may require. Typically people in PHEVs normally just have these and charge them overnight. We'll come back to charging once on the dash so much going on under here underneath here is a space saver spare wheel with all the relevant jacks and tools applied to change that on the side of the road you might notice actually 12 volt battery is actually kept underneath there as well very clever use of space so we do have handles to either side so if i was to pull on these obviously these seat belts connected but you can pull these cables and that drops down the rear seat obviously my live example didn't work to the left hand side of the boot there we have a 12 volt socket that would be perfect for charging cool boxes power packs and everything in between the next one there with the times two is for the tow bar so double click on that button stand clear to give you a live shot of this so the towing capacity for a ford cougar phev is a 1500 kilos 1 1.5 tons on a brake trailer and that is reduced by law to 750 kilos for an unbraked trailer so double click on the button the tow bar then locks into place and on the left hand side we have the updated eu electric socket um, again so it's a lovely system because this has the tow bar fitted from factory that also means we have the trailer blind spot assist as well so the blind spot assist will push back to the end of your trailer so very clever technology and also includes trailer sway control again double clicking the button standing clear watching out for your ankles and that will then see you mate gone just like that so a fantastic retractable tow bar system so that's inside the boot but again the boot space is big enough for a couple of dogs suitcases sports equipment and things such as that Click the button and we'll shut that up. Now let's have a look inside the rear of this beautiful ST Line X. So I'm a big fan of these Cougars. 
So door card again, the hardware in plastic. If you did have children in the rear, nice and easy to wipe clean and mucky finger marks. Leading into a soft touch synthetic leather armrest. You see that beautiful ST line stitch in there as well. And we have four electric windows. So you have the corresponding switch on the corresponding door card. For the first time in this video, let's spin that camera around and show you the rear seating. So you have this beautiful ebony leather with a suede in the lower back and the base part of the seat. If you do carry those smaller humans of this world, you may require an ISO fix import. So you have one on the offside rear and another again on the near side rear. The slight party piece with these seats as well, because they do have a rail underneath, so you can pull them. Oh, it's because I tried We're having some seat belt tension issues here, it would seem. Let's just sort that out there. Look, that's why the seat didn't fold down like so on the demonstration, but that's what that lever will do. Anyway. So these seats have a rail underneath, so you can pull them forward, like so. Um, so then you can use the lever and recline the seats as well, give you a laid back recline journey. Anyway, that's enough about reclining seats. Once the children have grown up and they've got a cold bottom, they might require rear heated seats. So there's a two-way powered reheated rear seat system. And at the bottom there is two USB-C, so that delivers about five amps of charging. This would be perfect for iPads, switches, and everything in between. Once their feet can touch the floor, you're going to need some floor mats. So we have the fitted PHEV Cougar floor mats, the ST lunge with the red stitching already in there. So it's one less thing to worry about after purchasing the vehicle. It's a nice chance just to pop the camera upwards to show you how much light is let in by that panoramic glass roof. So we do have the beautiful black headlining there. As you can see, there's such a light space in there as well. Moving onwards, moving onwards into the driver's seat now. So, starting on the door handle, we have these uh, door card even. Lovely carbon fibre strip leading into the door handle. And just below we have interior locking, electric mirror adjust. We have the auto or folding mirrors. That's the window lock for the rear. And we have all four window controls leading into a beautiful soft touch armrest again with that red stitching. So let's spin that around and show you some more seats there. So again, it's a lovely half leather, half sway design. These seats are incredibly comfortable. These are 10 way electrically adjusted and they are both heated also. As you can see, in addition to that leather is wonderful in the sway section, looking great as well. So down here, 10 way adjustable. One and two is your front tilt. Three and four is your height adjustment. Five and six is your forward and backward. Seven and eight is your rear tilt. And nine and 10 is your lumbar support. So again, a very comfortable seat. Now I'm just gonna jump inside the vehicle. You may hear a little bit of distortion on my microphone, so please just bear with me. Okay, now the wind, let's take the hood down. Let's get comfortable and let's talk about the interior. So once again, the keyless entry is complemented with an engine start-stop button. Click the button, and that will gain us power to the vehicle. Okay, so let's give you a tour around the dashboard to begin with. I'm gonna be controlling the 12.3 inch instrument cluster using the back, okay, up and down, and menu button on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. So it defaults into a normal drive mode. So you get this lovely dark blue screen ahead of you. We'll change around the drive modes in a minute so you can see the differing uh, screens. Left to right is a coolant temperature sensor. We have a digital speedo in the middle there. At the bottom, the compass, the odometer. So the exact mileage of this vehicle is 10,215.5. Next up is the ambient air temperature, gear selector, indicator. Then we have the battery range. So the battery is currently got 29 miles of fully electric driving left inside. And to the right hand side, the range for the fuel tank. We have at the top right hand side, the bar graph for the fuel tank. Gone is the RPM gauge. We now have the power displayed in kilowatts. You can see the battery and you can see the engine there. So that makes a combined reference to how much output power. This is essential when driving these vehicles. In the middle there, we have the fuel economy graph. So if I just flick through that. So this trip computer is rather impressive. So uh, over the last, uh, what is it? So we've done 600, no, my apologies, 6,445.2 electric miles. And uh, we're averaging 102.6 miles to the gallon. 
so some incredible MPG. Um, I was lucky enough to drive one of these uh, vehicles last week. I did uh, quite a few miles in one. Uh, so basically, my verdict of it, if you're not using the hybrid system, so let me show you a bit more about that. We have four selectable drive modes. So auto EV, this will use it as a hybrid system. All right, so where low torque demands and everything like that, it will use the electric motor. And when you're at your full capacity, so sitting at the motorway, for example, 65, 70, it will use it combined. And that's when you get some incredible MPG over 110 or so. And if I on a long run, I was getting 123 miles to the gallon, believe it or not. So for my long run, using as a hybrid, incredible miles to the gallon. So the next option there is all electric driving. This will disconnect the uh, engine and you'll be using the capacity of the 14.4 kilowatt battery. So that will give you 29 miles of fully electric driving. Fantastic. The next one along is energy saved for later. So this will drive just as a normal petrol vehicle now, nothing electric. The illumination on the battery has now gone out. So this is going to be simply using petrol. The next one, which I don't think I did it enough justice, battery charged by engine. So in this mode, you are again using it as a petrol vehicle, but also happening in the background is it's charging up the battery as you go along. So on the way back from my journey, I had completely depleted the battery on the way there. And on the way back, I had it on this fourth setting. On this fourth setting, fully electric, you'll get about 45 mpg. Now, I wasn't driving it fast, but I wasn't driving slow neither. About 45 mpg. And all, whilst all that's happening, it's charging up the battery. I assumed in my head that it's going to be a very slow charge rate. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how quickly the engine charged the battery as well. So halfway home, I had about 20 odd miles left in there, changed it back to hybrid, and my MPG just shot straight up again. So I couldn't believe the mileage I did, and it only cost me about 18, 19 pounds in petrol. Fantastic. So anyway, that's my past experience. Lovely. So that's me rambling on about drive modes. If you click the mode button there, you can change the screen to your selectable drive modes. We have an eco, sport, we have a slippery, snow and sand, and back to normal. But any, any mode you put it in, it's going to change the ambiance of the screen. So put it in sport mode, for example, and it will change to a grey, red, aggressive ambiance. Wonderful. So that's a bit about that. Flicking through the menus, again, we have the tyre pressures there as well, calm screen, all sorts going on. All right. In the name of spec, we're going to have to just progress, but you do have select screens down there and all sorts in there. Above that is your head-up display, HUD HUD. So if I just zoom in and try my best to focus for you, you can see the miles per hour and the traffic speed sign just to the right-hand side. When you're using the adaptive cruise control on this vehicle, that's where you can see all the lines appear for the distance to the vehicle in front and your set speed just to the left-hand side of it. You can also set that to your limiter, so you can set your limiter based on this speed sign, it's just red. Um, you can, if you're taller or shorter, you can adjust where those optics are displayed on the screen so they're always going to be in your direct line of vision. Very handy point indeed. So let's just push the chair back quickly. On the left hand side is where you'll find the buttons for the cruise control, so that includes your uh, distance, top left, lane centering, bottom left, standby top right and speed limiter with set speed plus and minus in the middle volume minus volume plus and also a mute button on the left hand side on the right hand side is the arrows to control the screen but we also have a voice command pick up decline and previous and next song function i cannot believe we're at 18 minutes already this is incredible underneath this little cubby hole here is where you put your sweets on a longer journey i won't have any arguments about that that's just the fact nice place to reside your phone i found doesn't go flying out everywhere down here we have five buttons. This one is the mode button to change the drive mode. We have one for the head-up display. This is for your four park assist. The EV button will change the drive mode between hybrid or fully electric. And we have your parking sensors off there as well. This is an auto hold button, like a temporary handbrake if you like, uh, followed by your electric park brake. Push down to cancel, pull up to apply. Uh, when the handbrake is on and you put it into a drive gear and go to pull away, it will self-cancel, but you do have to self-apply it manually apply it afterwards adjustable cup holders spring sprung loaded your coffee's not going to go flying everywhere everyone's happy down in this section here we have a wireless charging pad and further down there we have a usb c and a usb a port followed by a 12 volt socket either of these sockets would be perfect media port to connect the apple carplay or android auto dual zone air conditioning system appears here so both sides of the cabin can be set to individual temperatures um, 
So if you do have a really cold passenger, you can keep them nice and warm by keeping yourself nice and cool. The winter pack also features on this vehicle. Honestly, spec-wise, it doesn't get much better, I promise you. Heat your front seats, heat your steering wheel, and it's just all your fan speed is in the middle. Electronically heated windscreen, it's going to defrost in no time, demiss in no time. Different demiss functions to the left-hand side, different flows of vents found in the middle with recirculation and air conditioning found to the right-hand side. Lovely. Let's go onwards to talk about this then. This is a SYNC 3.4 modules. This is your audio infotainment system. Worth noting, we do have the BNO sound system in here, so if you're into your tunes, you've got an incredible sound system. Not only that, you can go, well, if it was on. Oh, I'll turn that down a bit. Go into your BNO sound, you can adjust all this to your preferences as required. So this effectively is your home page. You get a snapshot of the navigation, you've got your radio there and your phone connectivity. Being a hybrid, we have two additional uh, little screens. We have the idling screens, so you can see just what's going on. If the engine was engaged, the engine will be illuminated, but at the moment we just have the battery in the back. Coming home once more, the right hand one is where you can get all of your charging information. So ch time to fully charge, it displays there. 16 amp so that will be the the charger supplied and the 10 amp one will be the faster one so 0.5 hour four hours beg your pardon to a full charge kind of charging preferences you can actually schedule your charging there as well so some people get nice cheap electricity throughout the night so you can schedule that so it'd be even cheaper okay bottom left is audio then we have various sources such as fm dab and bluetooth audio next up is your phone add your phone via bluetooth connectivity in the middle is the Ford Navigation, a lovely system to use. If you'd like to come to Perkins to look at this Cougar, I do not blame you for a second, click the search box and you shall need Charlie Mike 77 6 Sierra Alpha. Click the search box and that will navigate your route straight here to Perkins Garages in no time at all. Uh, once all of your uh, destinations, points of interest, home, favourites are all programmed in, you can then set your navigation by going through the menu in front of you on the digital driver display nice and easily i'm a big fan of that feature so if we come out of there we're then going to progress into settings where we have the driver assistance pack sorry if you think i'm rushing but i like to try and keep these under 20 minutes and we're at 22 already so much spec so we've got the adaptive cruise control intelligent speed limiter lane keeping system pre-collision assist traffic sign recognition We've got a rear view camera, blind spot, and that's a trailer, blind spot assist as well. Grade assist, wrong way alert, cross traffic alert, driver assist, uh, driver alert, sorry, and the traction control. We're then going to your vehicle. Na, na, na. In vehicle, we have all charge port, port light. We've got my key. We've got global open and close on the windows. Ambient lighting as well there. We've got the auto uh, wipers rain sensing wipers power tailgate this is your auto high beam and your lighting there as well and adaptive headlamps that's the quad prism led the headlights guys then we got your auto fold mirrors found at the bottom so just quickly it's going to pop this into reverse there's the high definition reversing camera and for those of you the tow that black line in the middle is the most important one that is going to get you onto your tow bar nice and easily so no more left a bit down a bit right a bit no just you can hit your trailer by yourself top right hand side is where you'll find the proximity sensors for the front and rear parking sensors this will give you an intermittent beep and increase in frequency as you get closer to the object in question back into park lose the camera click home quickly click the parking button uh, this is the self park assist so that will give you a parallel park out a perpendicular park in and also a parallel park in so it uses the front and rear parking sensors to build an image and once it knows it can get into that space simply follow the instructions on the steering wheel uh, on the steering wheel on the screen and it will guide you in to those tricky parking spaces last one is going to click on the uh, front camera there you can see a nice wide spectrum view out of the front if required click it once more you're into a panoramic view there so yeah a fantastic sync module we have tons and tons of goodies Worth noting also, fully supportive of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so whichever software you have on your mobile phone, plug it in using a USB port that I previously showed you down there, and it shall mirror your phone onto this screen here. Very important because it keeps your hands off your phone so you can receive incoming phone calls. Click the voice command button on the steering wheel, take advantage of your voice assistant on your mobile, such as Siri or Google Assistant, and you can ask it to do a whole range of tasks, such as make phone calls, play music, uh, play audio books, what's the weather like tomorrow anything you like okay 
thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, there's been tons and tons of spec. I don't think we have any better spec cars here at Perkins. Uh, that's why the video is almost 25 minutes long. So thanks for watching my short movie. I hope you found it useful. If you did have any other questions, please get in contact using the number 01376 550 899. Like the video, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.